guardian of birth, healer of the sick, comforter of the aged. To the profession of medicine, to the men and women who labor in its cause, this true story is dedicated. has a single point to make, the struggle for the preservation of life. It centers around the men and women who have dedicated their lives to that struggle. Their title, Doctor of Medicine. There's too much dignity and too much suffering in the fact of life to justify any romantic compromises with honesty. There's excitement and triumph enough in truth. My name's Conrad Steiner. I'm a doctor of medicine, obstetrician. The case in point, Estelle Alberta Collins. She's 29 years old. She was married seven years before the first baby began. That means a lot. In her sixth month of pregnancy, she began to develop symptoms I didn't like. And two weeks later, April 11th, the final answer was spread out on a glass slide under a microscope in the laboratory of Dr. George A. Fletcher, hematologist. Not much doubt about it. Not in my opinion. Want to try to get Dr. Steiner for me? Yes, sir. Dr. Steiner's office? Oh, yes, Dr. Fletcher. Yes, he's right here. Just a moment, please. Dr. Fletcher with a report from Mrs. Collins. Thanks. Hello, George. How are you? Okay, and you? Not too bad. A little busy. George, you work up the report on Miss Collins? Just finished. Yeah. Uh -huh. right here. What's your impression? It's leukemia. Uh. No question about it. Yeah. I see. You didn't have much doubt about it, did you? No, I guess I was just looking for a miracle. I'll send you the report. All right, George, thank you. Bye. We'll get a phone number for Miss Collins' husband. Place of business. Well, I believe he works at home, if I'm not mistaken. A commercial artist or something. Excuse me, doctor, let me see. The laboratory report was far from encouraging. It was the last thing in the world I wanted to do, but there was no choice. I called the patient's husband, a self-employed commercial artist, and made an appointment to meet with him that night in my office. Because of her condition, I asked him not to mention it to his wife. Larry, what do you think? Nice. <laughs> Covers it pretty well, doesn't it? Yeah, but what do you wear when you're eight months along? A puff time? I hear you talking on the phone? Yep. Who was it? Uh, Holloway. He wants to talk to me about some layouts at about six. Hmm. He can use the business. Do you know what they want for baby buggies these days? Money? Too much. Well, we always can give Junior away. Think of all the cash we'd save. <laughs> Not on your life, Buster. It's still kind of hard to believe, isn't it? Hmm. Our own baby. Seven years. Long time making the grade. Hmm. We start slow. We finished strong. How are you feeling? Mm, pretty good. I'm still kind of tired. I don't feel like doing a thing. Well, buck up, little mother. It'll all be over in three months. <laughs> That's when it starts. I don't think it'll be too much trouble to you. Well, I'll tell you about that when you get up for those 2 a.m. feedings. At 20 minutes past 6 that night, Collins knew the truth. I explained it was a rarity, one case in several hundred thousand. It wasn't much comfort. It's one of those few things the doctor never forgets. The look of a man who's just been told his wife's going to die. Now, thinking about it isn't going to help. How do I tell her? What do I say? It's going to come as a shock to her. I think she'll take it pretty well in stride. Well, maybe if we took the baby, don't you think Larry, that... Larry, I already told you. Does she have to know? I mean, if we didn't tell her... Just they'd... a question of time until she starts asking questions. 
It's only fair she ought to be told. I can't. I, I can't tell her. Would you tell her, Doctor? All right. I'm going to drive out with you now. Then we get it over with. Better. Oh, no, no. Um, how about tomorrow sometime? You know, she'll be feeling better. Than, than, you know, sometime in the morning. All right. How about 11 o'clock? Yeah. I guess I ought to go home. All right, Eastcliff, come to Mother and tell her everything. What's the matter? Did you like that old nasty $3 steak we had for dinner? Oh, it's nothing. I was just thinking. Yeah. Get the latest news in sports in just five minutes. Now we continue with more music from the stage of the 800 Club. How you feeling, Stella? I don't know. What have you got in mind? I didn't see Holloway tonight. That was just an alibi. I went to see Dr. Steiner. That was him on the phone this afternoon. What did he want? It's going to be rough to hell. Rough as it comes. You sound like you're going to club me. I am. Steiner wanted to make sure. He had a couple of the other doctors check it. They went over the whole thing. Went over what? What do you mean? The baby. Oh, no. He said we'd lose the baby. Well, Steiner said everything went well. The baby be a normal, healthy kid. Well, then what is it? Tell me. Larry, don't be silly. Tell me, what is it? It's you, Stell. Me? That's why they took all those blood tests. Why? Well, there's something wrong with you. It's leukemia. Leukemia? Something to do with the white blood cells. It, it's no good. There's too many white blood cells. It's no good. Well, what does it mean? What do I do? It's acute leukemia. Well, what happens? How do they treat it? Do I take shots or something? I'm going to give it to you straight, Stell. It's fatal. I can't save you. You want the rest? It's fast. They can prolong it a while, that's all. How long, Larry? I don't know, I don't know. A year? Six months? Less? We'll see Dr. Stein in the morning. He can tell you better than I can. And the baby? Good chance the baby will live. Pretty good chance. Is you right? Pretty rough. I never thought much about dying before. The pain in the neck. Larry. Larry. see, among other things, the bloodstream is composed mainly of blood cells. Red blood cells and white blood cells. Now, whenever there's an excessive number of either one, it's a pretty sure sign of danger. And in your case, it's the white blood cells. You understand? I think so. Well, let me see if this will make it a little more clear. You see, the red blood cells carry the supply of oxygen to the tissues in the various parts of the body. Now, when the red cells are crowded out by the great number of white cells, that supply of oxygen is gradually choked off. I'm oversimplifying, but in effect, that's what's happening. I see. And there's no doubt in your mind? I'd be lying if I said there was. The 
symptoms, the condition of the lymph nodes, spleen, your general tendency to hemorrhage, that could point to several things. But the laboratory reports narrowed it down. You mean the blood test? Blood test, chest picture we took, and especially the examination of the marrow specimen. Ms. Collins, I've had the opinion of experts, and it all points to one thing. I see. You might keep this in mind. The doctor's only a human being. He can make a mistake just like anybody else. He's not the almighty. And my baby? You sure it won't affect him? But for some reason, we don't understand. The leukemia stops at the placenta. You'll have a good chance. If he's eight months along when he's born, I'd say he'd have a good chance. You think I'll last that long? Honestly? Well, it might even be longer, we can't say. One thing I can tell you, we're gonna help you all we can. How? But I've got to understand this. It's not a cure. It's what we call a palliative treatment. See, in your case, the use of x-ray therapy is out of the question. It might harm the baby. Oh, no, I wouldn't want that. The baby comes first. Well, there are some drugs that have been developed. They won't harm the baby, and they could help. And they might give me a little more time? Well, the more effective the drug, the longer the time you'll have. And the longer I live, the better chance the baby has. That's right. I guess it's silly. Do you think I might do it? Live long enough to see the baby born? Right. It's possible. It'd be kind of nice to see him, wouldn't it? See what he looks like. The color of his hair. To see him just one. Just one. Doctor, do you think I'm asking for a miracle? Well, you go ahead and ask. I've seen them happen. April 20th, 7.30 p.m. The patient, Estelle Collins, accompanied by her husband, arrived at St. Charles Hospital. She was in her 26th week of pregnancy. Her fight for life had begun. Not a fight for her own life. That much was hopeless. She realized it. She accepted it. The fight was for the life of her unborn child. If it was to have a good chance of survival, she had to fight death for at least six weeks. Stella Collins was registered and lodged in a room on the third floor, West Wing, room 307. One of the critical moves in the struggle for the life of the unborn Collins baby was made the following morning, April 21st, 10 a.m. Those directly associated in the case, George A. Fletcher, M.D., hematologist, Averill B. Morrison, M.D., hematologist originally consulted, Arnold James Wesley, M.D., St. Charles Hospital resident physician, and myself. It's had now um, a total of about eight pints of blood. Her white count is now somewhere in the nature of 65,000. It's still pre predominantly lymphocytic, of course. Uh, also, she's developing a few more anterior cervical nodes, as you can see there. But uh, I'm not too alarmed about the whole situation as far as being able to carry her along for a while yet. Initial therapy includes prescribing for the patient a daily dosage orally of 0.5 milligrams of a folic acid antagonist, amethoptron. It's a drug designed to reduce the excess number of white cells in the blood to destroy them at their source. In some previous cases, it's proved toxic. How the patient might react, we have no idea. Also, we have no choice. Whole blood will be transfused as needed. April 30th, 2.30 p.m. The dosage of 0.5 milligrams of amethoptron has shown some effect. White count 60,000. It's possible the drug is retarding the progress of the disease. In any event, the baby is nine days closer to life. Just look, now there's going to be no argument to the name, no matter what your mother says. Okay. Lawrence Randolph Collins, Jr. Promise? Yeah. That is, unless it's a little girl. Then you can name it after your mother. How have they been treating him? Food pretty good? It's all right. <laughs> the nurses or something. Too bad you can't be around to hear it. What do you mean? Every night, regular, 11 o'clock. 
They start playing shuffleboard with the bedpans. May 12th, the patient's white count, 80,000. She sustained two minor internal hemorrhages to date. May 18th, the patient is approaching her 30th week of pregnancy. White count, over 90,000. No sign of remission. Patient steadily declining. A complete setup for possible emergency surgery is placed in the patient's room. May 26th, the patient has sustained additional internal hemorrhages. The dosage of amethoprine has become toxic. The patient's mouth is inflamed. White count, 100,000. Chances for the baby's survival? We can't be sure. Dr. Steiner. Yo, Wesley. Another hemorrhage, why don't you start? You move her up to surgery? Yes, move her up there now. Wesley, you call Mr. Collins? Call him. All right, Wesley, I'll be right in. Yeah. I arrived at St. Charles Hospital a few minutes past 3 a.m. Preparations for surgery were just about completed. I changed my clothes and went immediately to the scrub room. The hospital resident, Dr. Wesley, was standing by to assist. How's it look, Russ? Pretty sour. Still hemorrhaging? Yeah, seems to be. How is she? Poor. Pressure's way down. Respiration? 30. Very shallow. Pulse weak and thready. About 140. I'm assisting her now. It's a girl. Tissue scissors. All right. We got a sleepy baby. Let's get over the table. Blanket. All right, start, let's go. Our heart tones are good. They're strong, but they're rapid. At least 170. Still does, doctor. Yeah, clean out the mouth. No breathing? No, doctor. Check your catheter.
Form back. Call me. Call me in three minutes. How long has the baby been out? Two minutes, Doctor. Come on, let's have that call. Six minutes without breathing. Never knew it wanted to go any longer. My heartbeat's getting irregular. Happy and starting benzoate. Three minutes. Right. Give me the ether. Come on, let me have it. Right amount. I'll put it in the cord. Positive pressure? I'll get it in a minute, Doctor. Where's that catheter? Breathe for it. Positive pressure machine's ready, Doctor. All right, ma'am. Turn it on, 30 seconds. Five minutes. Can't go much longer. No response. Nothing? No oxygen. No nourishment. Turn that off. How long has it been now? Six minutes. Any response at all? Contrast pass. Water, doctor. Come on, come on. Here's the cold, doctor. Cold. Hot. Cold.
Thanks, Russ. I'm in surgery this morning. Thanks again, Wes. Dr. Steiner? Yep. The husband's outside. Mr. Collins? Mm-hmm. Do you want me to tell him his wife died? No. Tell him his baby lived. <laughs>